you know, XR Hub today is is really the secure app launcher. And so you can launch obviously just native apps on the on the headset. But the other thing that XR Hub can do is is broker that connection to a cloud XR you know streamed app. So in XR Hub, we're not only saying, okay, launch your you know, apps that you push down, but you can launch remote applications. So XR Hub actually has all the APIs and SDKs built in to, to talk to Horizon, talk to Workspace ONE. So it knows all of the applications that you've been provisioned. So, you know, a, a user will just see, you know, it might see, you know, their training application that's running locally, and they might see another training application which is running on Horizon. They don't know any different. They're just clicking on the link and they get launched into the experience. And so that's what XR Hub is trying to do is enable you know, VR, whether it's local or remote, to be, to be accessible on the headset. And the final piece is, is really you know, web-based applications as well. So to your point, you know, Frank, is that now, that now that these cameras are being introduced, there's this really interesting use case where productivity starts to come in, where actually I might want to, rather than take a laptop with me, um, you know, just take my headset and a, and a rollable Bluetooth keyboard, right? I put my headset on, I have infinite screen space, I have six applications running, um, and I can connect to my web apps or my Windows applications with XR Hub. So XR Hub now supports that productivity use case. And as the headsets get lighter, you know, um, and, and more, in, and the cameras improve, we're going to get some really interesting you know, use, use cases for VR. Um, uh, you know, there's there's some amazing headsets coming to market. There's a new one called um, Apara 5K, which is which is a tiny headset with um, you know high resolution uh, micro displays and uh, although you know it's obviously a, a new headset it, it's kind of leading the way to show you look these headsets now are lighter than your mobile phone okay lighter than your mobile phone you can wear it on your face and yeah you, know, you can wear it for two hours say or three hours right and, and do some work on them the high resolution so there's some really interesting you know headsets coming to market this year uh, it's a very you know fast moving technology area, and so you know we're excited to support these headsets and enable them in the enterprise. Yeah, one of the things you mentioned um, just a couple of seconds ago were these remote applications, and yeah, I know what I worked on during my take three with you guys. So I also know what some of the challenges are. But at the same time, when I was talking to different people, I also know a lot of people didn't really understand what those challenges would be with VR. Uh, goggles or applications in general. Maybe you could talk a bit about you know what the challenge is with the VR app, streaming it remotely, things like latency, refresh rates, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, because you know I think that truly shows uh, the complexity of the stack that VMware has built, right? Yeah, a- absolutely. No, good point. And I think it also reminds me about a point. You know, there's this kind of VR has been in, in a bit of a hype cycle since probably 2014. You know, for anyone that followed you know, the Oculus uh, Kickstarter, everyone was excited about VR. And we kind of had this initial kind of launch of PC VR. Um, and, and you know, it, it quickly became obvious that some VR is uncomfortable and can give you motion sickness. And, you know, a lot of things have changed since then. I, we went through this period where you could put your phone into a cardboard thing and, you know, some people would feel queasy about that. And so what we've, what, what we understand now, you know, things have changed a lot in the last two years. So if, if your experience of VR was 2014, 2015, 2016, even 2017, I would say revisit the technology because we've come a long way. But what we understand now is that frame rate um, is, is extremely important in, in, in VR. It, it, you must be able to maintain at least 72 frames per second. Anything lower than that and you'll start to get motion sickness. And it really depends on person to person, but that's a key thing. Um, and so frame rate is extremely important uh, for just user comfort and user adoption.